Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to welcome you here to the memorial service for Janice. I wish we were gathered under different circumstances, but those of us who have been alive for a while we realize that this is a natural part of the life cycle. It wasn't supposed to be this way. This was not God's intention. Death was never part of his plan. But because of bad choices that Adam and Eve made, we have to suffer with this thing we call death and the loss of people that we care for and love. So this afternoon, I'd like to welcome you here. And though it is a sad event that we mourn the loss of Janet, what I want you to do is if you knew her, I want you to think of the good things about Janet that made you happy, the time that you were able to spend with her, and let this be a celebration of her life rather than just a mourning of her death. Amen? Amen. If we can, um, I'd like to again welcome you here. We're going to have now hymns of praise that um, Moon and Margaret have picked out and lead us out in, so we're going to turn it over to them.
song is going to be number 449, Never Part Again, number 449.
just let me take a minute and talk about Janet for a second. You know, uh, she was a special lady. Mm -hmm. And I, well, you know what I really liked about Janet is you didn't, you didn't have to wonder where you stood with Janet. <laughs> you know, if it was in here, it'd come out here. You know, I, I really like that about people. I, I like people that there's, you know, that, that you don't have to have all that mail. You know, um, she was the very first person that I met when I walked through these doors. And um, she greeted me. And she was quite a greeter. I can tell you, I mean, uh, I've never been greeted like that before in my life. And I, we were instant friends. Um, she was, uh, we were both laughing. And I almost thought she was going to ask me out on a date. <laughs> she was, uh, she was something, Janet. She was, she's, uh, I, I just, there's nobody like her. There's, I never met anybody like her, really. She was one of a kind, for sure. And, uh, you know, I, I'm happy to have had her as a sister and, and to know her the way we did and uh, do things together in Vespers. And, and, you know, her, her next conscious thought, waking moment will be Jesus. And, uh, and she knew that. And she obviously has went to sleep, but... You know, it's, it's, um, I'm thankful that we don't mourn like most people, you know, um, there's hope. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and there is no other, and she knew that. And she carried Jesus with her, in her heart, right into the grave. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, if we go to bed with Jesus, we'll wake up with Jesus. There's something you can take to the bank, for sure, you know. Um, I didn't realize, though, that she was from Doylestown, PA. That's um, huh, a big old truck stop down in there. I've been through that town many times. But, but uh, yeah, I, I can see that now. I mean, I, I, I never knew that she was from PA. I didn't even know that until I opened this bulletin up. And, uh, now I understand some of her attitude a little bit. Don't give me any book, Miss Patty. <laughs> Anyways, if we might all be in a spirit of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for the wonderful time that we've had with our dear and precious sister Janet. And we're thankful that, uh, that you got all things under control. That, that there's nothing that's ever caught you by off guard. And uh, everything is unfolding as it should. And we're, we're just thankful that this, this church here was able to have her in our midst. And we're thankful to, and be, we're better for him knowing, knowing her and loving her and having her love us. And we want to continue and carry on the work that this church has begun so many years ago. We have a purpose and a mission to fulfill the destiny that the Lord has for his people. And that is to prepare people so that not all of us have to lay down and go to sleep like Janet, but that we would, some of us, see you come in the clouds, in this flesh. Lord, I pray that you bless our work. I pray that you, we're inviting you here today to be with us as we, as we, uh, we're not mourning the death of Janet. We are celebrating the life that she had and the time that we had with her. And we're so thankful that you allowed us to touch our dear sister's life and that she was able to touch us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, thanks for coming today. Janet Lois Wendy, born in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, September 26, 1937. Yeah, she celebrated 79th birthday last month. She looked good. She had two brothers, David Wendy, who predeceased her, 
and Bruce Wendig, who lives in Port Orange, Florida, and I'm happy to say he's here with us today. She also has a sister, June Taylor, who lives with her husband in Yakinsville, North Carolina. Her family moved to the Deland area when she was young, and she graduated from Deland High School with a class of 1955. She would often attend reunions with her surviving classmates. And as a high school student, she started working for Barnett Bank. Some of you may remember Barnett Bank before it was bought out by many others. I remember going with her one time to a reunion as her plus one to a Barnett Bank bank employee reunion and potluck. When I met her, she was a cashier at Publix. She worked in one of those food prep kiosks where you prepare these samples for us to try and then go out and buy all the supplies at Publix. She also bagged groceries and pushed carts. But she never failed to make friends wherever she went. Yeah. Janet only had one daughter, Don Maxwell. Don lives in Franklin, Tennessee, which is a suburb of Nashville. She also has one granddaughter, Kara Beasley, and she lives in Thompson Station. Tennessee, with her husband and three children, Caleb, Isabella, and Ava. I first met Janet at a square dance in New Smyrna Beach. <laughs> she and her dance partner were a fun couple, and I remember once that she and Bob and Barb and I and another, camp, uh, another couple camped out after a square dance in Georgetown. And the next morning, Janet treated us all to pumpkin pancakes. I was quite impressed that she could pull that off in a camper. <laughs> I just usually have bare necessities when I go camping. <laughs> now, over the years, there were a lot of celebrations and parties, Thanksgivings and Christmases. We went on cruises. We even one time went, spent a week in a timeshare in Las Vegas where we visited the casinos and Red Rock Canyon and Boulder Dam. I'll always be grateful to Janet for inviting me to church, this church. One day she told me she had someone coming by her apartment that wanted to talk to us. That was the day I met Chuck and Fairlyn Duvall. The afternoon was spent learning and talking from the Bible about end time prophecies. I had attended several Baptist Church throughout the years, and I was raised that way, and I really thought that I knew everything I needed to know about salvation. But that day, I was awakened to the need for continual study of the scriptures and about our Lord's soon coming again to this earth. Janet served as a Sabbath school secretary for several terms. She was also our church greeter once a month. And she was known for her big hugs. She would often tell people that she met, you need to come to my church. And I saw this in her last hospital stay where she was inviting her nurse, nurses that came to, to help her 
to church with her. She also, when she went to Oceanville, did the same. Janet was what I would call a health nut. She always cautioned me about the dangers of eating certain foods or certain additives that could cause cancer. And I was also told, being on my feet like I am now, I needed to be wearing white socks. She believed in wearing white socks when you were on your feet because she knew that her feet felt better at the end of the day when she wore white socks. As late as six weeks ago, I went over to her house to check on her. It was my day off, so I didn't have my white socks on. I had light blue ones on. And she says, you need to be wearing white socks when you're on your feet. Anyway, each time Janet would hear something that would make her healthier or pain-free, she'd try it. There was her hot stuff which she made from a blend of various kinds of peppers and horseradish. Uh, I refused to drink it, <laughs> but I did have to make it for my friend Barbara once. My eyes watered the whole time I was in the kitchen. Jim Ragsdale, who many of you know, while married to her, complained she makes me a drink a shot of that every morning. <laughs> she believed in kombunchi tea, Essiac herb tea, and she drank hot water with cinnamon and honey every morning to help her blood sugar. I don't remember what all these concoctions were for, but if you go to the church rummage sale, you'll probably find some more books in there that might tell you about them. Sometimes we get emails that would have questions about your lifestyle. And after you answered those questions, it would give you an idea of what your life expectancy would be. And Janet usually scored about 100, better than I did. But then came last year. There was heartbreak, there was disappointment, there was regret. And it was sometime in May that we knew something was wrong when she became jaundiced. She had outpatient surgery in June that inserted a stent in her ductwork to drain that poison out of her system and she started to look better again. August 3rd, we drove to Florida Hospital in Orlando where she had another procedure and it was during that procedure that the cancer of the pancreas was diagnosed. Janet was adamant that she was not going to take chemo treatments because they kill the good cells as well as the bad cells. And Janet, being Janet, embarked on various natural cures. At that time, she seemed to lose the ability to eat more than a, a little mouthfuls at a time. She was in Florida Hospital, New Smyrna Beach, and Oceanville Nursing and Rehabilitation Center from August 7th through the 25th. And she could not wait to get back to her own little apartment where she could regain control of her life. Even Hurricane Matthew could not pry her out of her apartment. She stayed there that entire storm by herself. Her daughter Dawn was able to come and visit her September 10th, and I'm thankful now that I look back on it that she can remember her mother as she saw her then. Janet wanted to stay home and never again return to the hospital, and with the help and the love 
loving, kind staff of Vitus, which is a hospice group. She was given the equipment and the medicine and the health care to do just that. She also had the love of the members of this church in helping make her last days on earth as comfortable as possible.